How to check squirrels, suit, and footprints. Squirrel, suit, and footprints. Rudolph, how to check. Some of you own a house. Some of you dream of owning a house. So let me tell you what you're in for. <laughs> Animals. Picture my house. Beautiful. It's a single family detached house in a quiet neighborhood. It's a beautiful lawn. It's got trees swaying in the wind. It comes with bunny rabbits and pretty little squirrels. In a word, it's idyllic in summer. <laughs> now, picture winter. In winter, everything is covered in snow. The bunny rabbits have turned white and they're hiding in plain sight. The squirrels hide somewhere else, as are you, so you can't really blame the squirrels for hiding away from the cold. Until you discover where they're hiding that is <laughs> in your attic. <laughs> now, to be truthful, they're not bad roommates. The occasional pitter-patter of them running across the roof is a welcome distraction, and the heat that they revel in is already coming out the roof anyhow. If it just wasn't for the holes that they eat into your soffits to get into the attic. <laughs> oh well, you'll do, deal with it in spring, you think. You call the Humane Society, and they send a guy, and he brings this massive thing that looks like a giant mousetrap, metal evil thing, <laughs> and mounts it on the hole on the soffit. Oh no, don't worry, I said humane. This is just. I, you know, a trap door that they can leave and not come in. <laughs> so you think the problem is solved until you find out that they have babies. <gasps> oh, and they're desperately trying to make a new hole to get back into your soft. <laughs> All right, so you take off the trap thing and you wait until the babies are grown up and they're out of the house. <laughs> now you have this metal mesh over the hole. It's ugly, but at least the squirrels are out of the house. Summer turns to winter. You think you're prepared. One Friday night, you sit on the couch. It's cold outside, minus 35. You're tired. You're reading a book. And you hear a thunk. You don't think much about it. It's, it's cold. You think it's the house that's settling. You keep reading. You hear another sort of quiet noise just, just below the level of consciousness. You ignore it. You've had problems with birds before. You assume it's a bird on the outside somewhere that's you know, hitting the house somewhere and making that noise. The noise occurs a few more times, more quiet. So you still don't notice it. You go to sleep. You wake up the next morning, and you walk you know, energetic into the living room. And this time, you do hear the noise. And you notice it, a noise in the fireplace where there's not supposed to be a noise. And this time, you can put a name to it. Keening. Shit, something <laughs> fell down the chimney <laughs> last night. So you have to get it out because you, want, you don't want it to die in the chimney of hunger and thirst. You figure this has got to be easy. <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to grab a bucket. You're going to grab a lid. You're going to put the bucket under the chute. You're going to open it, trap something inside, throw it out. Easy. So, you bring the bucket, you open the flue cover, and you discover a squirrel that screams at you. <laughs> uh, if you imagine that squirrel in your face screams, it scrambles up onto that vertical of the flue cover and hangs on for dear life. <laughs> you try to get it off, it just hisses at you and stays on that flue cover. It's a squirrel. You think about it, you reconsider, you've seen those claws, what do you do? Okay? You do some internet research. You call the your friends of the Humane Society. <laughs> you come up with a plan involving hanging a rope down the chimney so the squirrel can escape. This involves climbing on the roof in the middle of winter. Oh. But for the cute little squirrel, you're willing to do this. <laughs> Unfortunately, the squirrel ignores the olive branch. I mean, the rope you've just given it. <laughs> So, 24 hours later, your squirrel is still 
in the chimney. You need a new plan. You do more internet research. You call your friends at the Humane Society. <laughs> and you get lucky. Somebody knows what they're talking about, and you learn that squirrels are afraid of humans, and they're afraid of open, unknown spaces. So, plan two. You go, and you make a little ladder, prop the chute open so that the squirrel can come down, leave food and water in the bucket, put a towel over your fireplace so that there's a nice and enclosed space. And you sit there quietly, and it works. The squirrel comes down into the fireplace. But as you approach the fireplace, the squirrel runs for cover into the chimney. <laughs> so you figure, well, if the, chimney, the squirrel is afraid of me, I will go away. And you leave the house. You have some errands to run, you leave the house. Come back. Success! The squirrel has left the fireplace. It is now in your house. <laughs> <laughs> On the second floor balcony, you go up, it races away from you. And if you think mice are fast, you should see squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> and it jumps off the balcony, and it jumps for freedom, and hits the window. <laughs> Falls down, runs for safety, in the chimney. <laughs> <sighs> All right, repeat number three. Now, if you want your lesson, you leave the window open and leave the house. <laughs> oh, no. You come home, the squirrel is gone. Yes. In truth, I think I got lucky. I expected that a squirrel coming down the chimney would be the equivalent of a chimney brush, and that I would have soot stains everywhere. <laughs> but all I could find is a sooty footstep on a wall. As it turns out, the squirrel did not, in fact, jump off the balcony the way you or I would. It just dropped, and when it was at the right spot, it just pushed off the wall to get onto the table. So, that's a quick summary of house ownership for you. A lot more work than you'd expect. But great memories. <laughs>